Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to export a virtual machine in Oracle VirtualBox and then import it into Microsoft Hyper-V. So you might think it would be pretty easy to do, but if you look at your disk files on each one, so in VirtualBox they're VDI files and Hyper-V are the VHDX files, so you can't just take your VDI file and attach it to a Hyper-V virtual machine and expect it to work. So what we need to do is to go into VirtualBox, choose the VM we want to export, go to File, Export Appliance, make sure this is selected. I'm going to go with Open Virtualization Format 2.0, and I'll leave the other settings here. You could, you know, strip the MAC address if you want. I think it might be a problem, and also if you want to uh, include network adapters. And then for this, I usually leave it unchecked because you don't need to export your ISO file that's attached to your VM just to take up space. And then you want to choose your location where you can export it. So I would export it into my Hyper-V folder just so I know where it is on my D drive here. And I already have one here exported, so I, that way we don't have to sit there and watch it export. So once you click on Save, you just go through the export and it's done. And then you'll have your uh, file right there. So I'm going to cancel this and pretend we exported it. And so now I just need to go back to my Hyper-V VMs. So there's my file here. So now you need to extract this OVA file. So you could use something like a Win7-Zip or WinZip or WinRAR. So I'm going to open it with and then I'm just going to extract all the files here. I think we probably just need the VMDK, but I'm just going to extract them all. This will take a few minutes. Okay, so now we have our files extracted there. Close this out. So this is the VMDK file we want. So now we're going to use a program. Type this in here. Starwind V2V Converter, which I'll put a link in the description so then you can download it and install it. So free install. Okay, so now we got to pick the location of the image file to convert. So you would think it'd be, you know, Hyper-V or whatever, but it's not. It's a local file since it's a file right there. So click on that. Click on Next. Now we've got to browse for the file name. And there it is right there. Gives you some information about it. Click on Next. Now the location of destination image. So we're going to do Hyper-V Server. Click on Next. Okay, so here's where things get, I wouldn't say tricky, but where we're going to have to decide what you want to do. You could either have this attach your file to an existing VM that you created first, or you could actually create a VM from the Starwind converter, if you like. So let's say we wanted to go back here and do a, a new virtual machine. Let's just call this uh, imported so we know what it is. Spell it. And let's put it with our other files here. Okay, next. We'll just do generation one for simplicity's sake here. Give it some memory here. Let's give it six gigs. Attach it to our default switch. And then we'll add a hard disk later. And then we'll finish. Okay, so now going back here, connect to the local host because that's where uh, Hyper-V is running. If it was a different host, you'd obviously put that in there. Okay, so now we have our choices here. So we could attach it to the virtual machine we already made just right now, or you could create a new virtual machine from scratch, and it'll kind of walk you through a similar wizard. Let me just kind of maybe do this real quick here. So where you put the information here, you just, you know, give it the name, the path, the CPU, the memory, generation, type, and so on. So it's kind of similar to uh, the Hyper-V configuration that we just did. So that actually does work because I've done that before, but we're going to do it the other way. So I'm going to attach it to this imported virtual machine. 
So we're going to do VHDX global image. That's the current type of uh, disk file here at Hyper-V. And then I'll leave the path here. You'll notice what I did, which I didn't mean to do. When you make the VM, you pick the location. Uh, I made an imported folder, then it made an imported folder of its own, so I should have just left it this folder here for the uh, location, then it would have created this folder and not had it twice, so lesson learned right there. So when you do it, just make sure you pick your root folder where your VM's here. This doesn't matter, it's just a test. Okay, click on Convert. And this will take a few minutes, so we'll be back for this. Okay, so the conversion is done, so we'll click on Finish here. Go back to Hyper-V. And then we'll go to our imported VM here. Look at the settings. Look at our hard drive. So here's our imported uh, Windows 10 Pro disk that we had from the other VirtualBox computer. So, okay, so we'll start it up here and see what happens. Okay, so we got Windows starting up here. So once again, from uh, VirtualBox, you want to export your appliance, pick your VM, pick your location. Um, OVF Format 2 seems to work well. Browse where you want it to go. And then you have your OVF file, or your, sorry, your, sorry, your OVA file. Then you want to unzip that using something like 7-zip, WinZip, WinRAR, and then you'll have your disk file here, and then you want to run the star converter. Let's open that again. Star Win converter, I should say. And then you use a local file. Next. Browse the file. Next. And then pick a Hyper-V. That's what you're importing it into, localhost, if you're using the same computer. And then decide which virtual machine you're going to attach it to. If you created one beforehand from Hyper-V without a disk attached, use that one. Or you could create a new virtual machine on the spot from Starwind itself, and then fire it up, and then hopefully you should be good to go. So I'll put a link in the description for the software, so you just need to you know, give me your email address, and they'll send you a link to download it, and it's free to use after that. All right, check it out and see how it works. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.